Hi folks, have you ever wondered how to identify and annotate deep space objects in your images like this? Well, if you've got PixInsight, I'm going to show you a really easy method, and I mean easy, based on some features that are buried in the script menu. Welcome to Astrogadge. Here we are uh, inside Pix Insight, and what I've done is I pulled up um, an image of Messier 106 that I took uh, earlier this year, I think it was back in February, I believe, February, March time. And um, what came out of it was a lot of little objects I didn't, ex well, hadn't expected to see really, probably because I hadn't done my homework properly. Um, so yeah, just a bit of searching actually find out what these were. But actually, the easiest way to do it is to, is to let Pix Insight do it for you, is to, rather than you know scour through books and atlases. Uh, and it's simplicity itself. So so let let let's start on this. I should say it's it's really easy. Uh, it's just two scripts that you have to use, and simplicity itself. So we go into the script section. And then to image analysis, and then to image solver. And you click on that. And what it's doing is it's pulling out the um, celestial coordinates data that's embedded in the image. Uh, and, and what it's after as well is the resolution uh, arc, arc second per pixel uh, of your imaging rig, in other words, the telescope and the uh, CCD or CMOS chip that you're using. Now I covered that uh, way back when we were I did a video uh, on plate solving and uh, it's all in there you know how to calculate that and or, or where to get the tools to do it but again really easy to, to, to acquire this particular piece of data. So in this case I was using the SP120 with uh, the uh, ASI uh, 2600MC Pro and that's the uh, resolution I get with that uh, particular combination and the pixel size of the um, camera is 3.75 microns. The, the rest of the settings are pretty much, uh, I'd leave them alone. Uh, I've just used it on uh, the automatic catalogue that uh, PixInsight has and that seems to work, but you've got other options here. For example, the UCA C3 catalog, which SG Pro uses uh, for plate solving, but I found so far anyway, um, this particular setting works. Um, if it doesn't, play around with the rest. And you can set the limiting magnitude for the stars or other objects uh, that you, you want the uh, system to identify and annotate. Um, I've set it to 20.5, which is pretty much way beyond the, the uh, power of, of this particular setup. One of the things that it's also asking you for is the date you, you took the image. Um, and it, it was uh, 2021, and it was around about mid to late February. Uh, I seem to remember, I can't remember exactly. But, uh, to be honest, I don't think it's that critical. Yeah, but if you're uh, you know, a month or two or a couple of weeks or whatever, uh, it doesn't seem to make any difference. So I've just put it down the 25th of February. But um, as I say, it doesn't seem to be too critical for it to work. So the next thing to do is, is, is like all plate solving um, uh, software, um, this is not a blind solver. You've given it certain coordinates here. And the thing it also wants is, is a little clue as to what the, what it's actually looking at. Uh, and in this case, it's Messier 106. So I just put in Messier 106. Press search. 
and confirm that and then simply hit OK and you'll see there's various things going on in the, the monitor window and it's doing its thing and uh, just to wait a few seconds and it should be done now what will happen once this actually finishes, it's saying it's ready now, is you'll be absolutely underwhelmed by any change in the image at this point. That's fine. That's okay. That's uh, perfectly normal. So what the system done, has done now is it's sort of loaded up the image. And uh, what you've simply got to tell it to do now is when it's got that information is to go back into script, go into render and annotate image and you'll be presented with this window here. Now, it's basically asking you, what do you want me to, what do you want me to annotate? What, what things do you want me to put on this image? So again, you can, you can choose all sorts of different uh, catalogs or designations. I'll even uh, look for asteroids and planets as well. Um, I'm not too interested in that in the moment. Um, the other thing you can do is you can play around with the um, the markers, the, the fonts, um, the colours, um, and the, you know, whether you want them in bold italic, uh, what font size you want, and again the colour. Uh, there are various things here. Uh, you, you can you can play about with you know if you're really interested in what they do um, then have a play that that's the best way uh, to do experimentation always a good thing in my opinion so uh, again just just basically deciding we're going to look at messy objects and NGC objects well I'm not bothered about constellation borders just constellation lines so just anyway it doesn't really matter let's just um, Press as is, let's say OK. Um, here we have it. There is your annotated image. So here's our annotated image in all its glory. And you can see that the, the galaxies that we initially referred to are NGC 448, 417, 422, 4 and 4345. But there's a couple of other little ones up here that I forgot to mention, and this one here as well, which, you know, again, if you're, sometimes you can't see the wood from the trees, can you? Right, so that's it, just using the, um, the, uh, the sort of main um, uh, catalogs, object catalogs. What I'm going to do now is to, to re, repopulate or, or re-annotate that uh, that um, original um, image but this time if we go back to script because the information about the image should still be in the memory uh, go back to render and let's go back to um, exercises render uh, annotate image but this time now when you look at the difference <laughs> is uh, we're going to add uh, this is uh, this uh, particular um, catalog called PGC. PGC stands for Principal Galaxies Catalog and is exactly what it says. It's, it's a catalog of faint galaxies um, of which there are a number of um, parameters that have been measured uh, um, against these particular objects and of course they've been listed. Now um, because a lot of the objects in, in this catalogue are very faint, they, they don't appear in the more popular catalogues that uh, astrophotographers are, are used to. So, like I say, I'm just going to, out of curiosity, um, check that box. So, as well as the NGC catalogues, Messi, etc., we're going to see what the results will be after including that in the search. So, let's do that. So, as you can see, there are considerably more uh, objects, um, galaxies, that is, in this field of view than, than, 
uh, one we'd actually uh, have believed. Um, and as you see, they all have this particular uh, PGC uh, designation. So let, let's zoom in a bit here. Uh, and you can see that, that they're easily mistaken for stars, faint stars. Um, and uh, there's, yeah, there's one there that looks sort of vaguely spiral. Yeah. Maybe with a bit more patience and uh, scrutiny, these images might find them. But some of them, like I say, hard pitched to say they were galaxies, but clearly they appear in the database, so the system has identified them. Wonderful, isn't it? So let's try this out on uh, on another uh, object that uh, I took earlier this year, and that's the Coma Cluster. And it, it's, it's an area of the sky of which are literally thousands of galaxies. And, uh, you know, if you look closely in this image, you can actually make out, yeah, they are not stars. And I think I said at the, the end of the video, uh, that uh, that um, I showed this on that uh, virtually well not virtually but most of the points of light in this image are galaxies so let's give this uh, particular image a try and see what we get out of this when we use the the PGC catalog along with the, the Messi and NGC ones so again into the script into image analysis into uh, image solver. Again, it's coming up with the the, the, the coordinates that, that the image has embedded. I'm going to change this again to 2021. Uh, it was again February, March, something I can't remember exactly. Um, we'll put it towards the end of the month. And again, uh, we're just going to leave it pretty much on the default settings. Um, tell it to search. I'm going to ask it to look for the coma cluster. Give it a clue. Yep, it's happy with that. So again, it's okay and everything here starts to chug away. Um, so it's again taking all information and referring it to the memory. Okay, so again back to script, back to render, back to annotate image. So this time I'm just going to leave it with the uh, PGC catalog in, uh, everything else is the same. I'm going to click OK and here we go. So here, here it is annotated and expanded a little bit. <laughs> and as you can see, I wasn't lying to you in the previous video. Um, most of the points of light in this image are galaxies. Uh, you can see lots of IC and NGC designations, but the majority of them uh, seem to be PGC objects. So uh, quite quite nice to quite nice to see. Uh, we'll try it out on uh, one more object just just to just to show show you it working in full. Okay, um, so this time I've uh, brought up uh, an image of Mercurian chain, which again I took earlier this year, but around about the same time as the others I've, I've just uh, demonstrated. Again, here's the annotated image, so we can see that uh, there are a lot more galaxies there than we uh, originally thought. It's correctly uh, identified the main ones in the so-called chain, but obviously um, there are a lot, a lot of a lot of other uh, galaxies present. And kind of, if you zoom in in that image a little bit, again, they, they just look like some of them, or the majority of them, just look like faint, faint stars. So let's let's uh, take a note of uh, one of these galaxies, one of the brighter ones. So let, let's take a note of this one here. Its uh, designation is PGC one six five one four seven. Hmm. Okay, take a note of that. What I've done now is I've uh, gone to the Hyperleader uh, website, which is where the the catalogue exists, 
and, and you can interrogate it. Um, I'll put the uh, URL up for it later at the end, as usual, so you can access it. So what I've done is uh, I've put in here uh, PGC165147, which was uh, the object that we, we saw in the um, image of the Mercurian chain, and simply press return. All the information you want on this particular object. So, you know, if, if you're really interested in what these things are, um, and, and data about them, then, then you can do that quite simply by, uh, by interrogating this database. Well, folks, a neat little feature that's buried deep in the scripts menu in PixInsight. Go and have a play with it, see how you get on with it. Uh, I've, I've not nearly sort of got used to the full features of it, but uh, it's a very useful and uh, cool thing to do with your images, really. Uh, particularly if there's objects in the image that you're not sure what they are. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to put the thumbs up and uh, uh, please consider subscribing. Um, it doesn't cost anything, it just means that you get the, the heads up in any future uh, content that I may produce. So again, thanks for watching and remember, keep watching the skies. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the sky.